Welcome to HR Success Talk. Today, Mr. Naresh Chetija will be joining us in our discussion on leadership. Hi, Charlotte. I'm glad to be a part of this discussion. Thank you for the invite. Looking forward to a great and insightful discussion with you on this. So, welcome, Naresh. He is the president of HR Success Talk. In his pursuit to know why people do what they do, he embarked on a journey of human behavior. Eventually, he got into designing and facilitating behavioral interventions. Naresh has an enriching work experience of 24 years in various domains like learning and development, performance management, and sales and marketing. He brings 18 years of experiential learning to the table. He is a voracious reader. He loves to read about human behavior, psychology, and philosophy. He is also the principal facilitator of Mentor Factor. So let's dive in into the discussion. My first question is, is can you share with us your professional journey as a coach and as a career strategist? I'm a learning and development professional with 25 years of experience. I started as a sales associate in concept selling, uh, that was 25 years back. Then I moved into uh, banking. That's when the shift from product training to behavioral training happened. Because I found behavioral training to be more challenging than product training. Currently, my scope of work is to design and deliver interventions in the field of, uh, in the areas of leadership development, performance management, organizational culture and behavior. I'm a certified brain mapping and NLP practitioner as well. We support our clients to deliver business results through translating objectives into practical uh, practical action plans, wherein we go down as, we, we after the intervention, I go ahead and prepare the individual development plan for every person who was a part of the intervention. My expertise are facilitation, coaching, and mentoring, competency mapping. You indeed have a wealth of experience, and I believe that comes handy when you are facilitating workshops, trainings, and developing people, and even in your coaching careers. So my next question is, what is your passion and purpose, and how were you able to discover it? My passion and purpose is to add value to the work that I do. While I was working with banking sector, one of my team members walked up to me and said, I'm having a tough time dealing with this client. And in spite of uh, five meetings over a period of three months and providing him with all the information, he's still not ready to sign the application form. To which I replied, why not uh, we both go and meet the client and understand the expectation. And in case there are challenges, we go ahead and help the client. So we went and met the client and we had a two hour brainstorming discussion with the client. And, and I was convinced that by this time the client would have more clarity. But then to my uh, surprise, the client said, uh, I'll get back to you. Very politely he said, I'll get back to you. This, this uh, statement of the client made me more curious to understand how does the consumer behave. And I got into study of consumer behavior by looking at the previous applications, loan applications of the customers. And gradually I expanded my scope of curiosity to my vendors, my fellow team members, my competitors and so on and so forth. This led me into uh, getting into the studying human behavior and that was the starting point of my journey. Why we do what we do. I came across uh, numerous people some of them were clients, vendors, managers, competitors. This exposed me to different patterns of human behavior and I decided to take a deeper dive in it. To discover, yes, uh, I have been able to discover some part of it and I am still on the journey to discover more about human behavior. I like what you said about your passion and purpose is to add value to people and I think that that is what the essence of great literature is. If we can add value to people, then 
our leadership journey is, is, is a waste because how can we lead and inspire other people without adding value to them? I mean, it's counterintuitive. It's important that we understand that we are not just selling products, we are not just providing services, but we want to make a difference in someone's life and that is adding value to people and there are a lot of ways that we can do that as a leader we can show it by the way we serve other people we develop other people we try to find ways how can be of help to them and that that's a good thing that you just mentioned Naresh and I love the story that you've mentioned about your journey how you were able to study consumer behavior and eventually led you to study human behavior and the key there is your curiosity and when you were talking about that it brings to mind what I've read before in Harvard Business Review that most of the remarks and uh, breakthroughs throughout the history is a product of or a result of curiosity so as a leader we have to maintain that inquisitive mind so like in your case because you were asking that question how come that for the past uh, two hours that you were able to shed light to your consumer or to your customer how come he wasn't able to readily sign the deal and that led you to study consumer behavior and then eventually studying the people around you which led you to human behavior what an interesting story about your professional career and this is i think one of the key takeaway from what you shared with us is as as we go through our leadership journey it's important that if we want to develop ourselves if we want to improve if we want to I excel in our field we must be able to have uh, that curiosity that inquisitive mind to ask the question and then we should not pour down we should not uh, back out we should pursue what our inquisitive mind is, is telling us so if if we ask the next question and then follow it through with an action it will lead us to where we want to go and that would lead us to several breakthroughs to inventions and just because historically we know that 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 is the the reason why a lot of inventions have been made it's because of our curiosity so I'm also quite curious now on your leadership uh, journey, Naresh. Um, how, why did you join this movement and uh, what is the role you have with HR Success Talk? I joined HR Success Talk in 2020 as Team Lead Human Resources. Gradually, I was elevated to the role of President Human Resources and Global Expansion. My focus is to make environment of HR success talk more and more conducive and increase the engagement level of the volunteers and of course add value to the HR fraternity. Now we have different initiatives uh, that are being taken by the HR. One is we conduct workshops exclusively for our volunteers. Second is give out reward and recognition. Third is talent engagement activities. Now why I joined HR success talk, I was looking for uh, platform or a community wherein I can add value to the HR fraternity. That was one. And then I found uh, HR Success Talk as an appropriate, the right kind of platform, which is doing a lot more than other communities. Second is uh, HR Success Talk is not for profit community. So these are the two reasons I wanted to be a part, part of HR Success Talk. It's nice to hear that someone is responsible for the engagement of the volunteers because when you join an organization and maybe this is true for those who are interested out there to be a part of uh, a community such as the HR success talk it's important that you feel that someone is is helping you to, um, fit into the culture of the, the organization and at the same time 
really ensure that you are growing with the organization and I love that uh, I love that in the HR success talk that people are not just connecting with each other it's not just a platform where you can network it's also a, a community of people where you can learn from each other and someone is really ensuring that that happens that you grow with the organization and another thing is that um, there are a lot of um, activities that there are a lot of interesting um, programs that are are adding value to many students professionals out there not only those that are in the HR community but to any individual looking for professional development so Naresh as a platform how can HR success talk help in the personal development of not only the HR practitioners but also the students and professionals as well. The HR Success Talk is a very important platform for students as they get to experience and learn about organizational culture, different yes. HR, best practices, current trend in human resources, and of course connect to a large network of HR professionals. It's like they get prepared for the final match. It helps them in smooth transition from campus to corporate. And for professionals, it's a great platform to come and join us in this initiative and be a part of HR community. It's a great platform for HR professionals to share and showcase their experience. And of course, network with HR fraternity. It's great to hear that we are part of an initiative where we can add value to students and professionals. Naresh, uh, you are serving as the president of the HR Success Talk, and I believe you also have a business. Can you share to us about your business and how you are adding value to the people in terms of that? And share to us how you were able to lead your organization to where it is now. My company's name is Mentor Factory. And I started this in 2014. And as I mentioned earlier about value addition, I walk that extra mile and support professionals to implement what they have learned in the interventions and workshops. Help them realize their natural behaviors, competencies, and potential. And this in turn helps them in their career progression and leadership development. At Mentor Factory, we are a team of three people. Uh, wherein role and goal of every team member is clearly defined so that each member knows what is their locus of control and what is expected out of them. I practice appreciative inquiry with my team to help them make better decisions. Every decision taken at in Mentor Factory is unanimous and or mutual. It depend, depends on the situation. The focus is on achieving the goal and not the path they take. The workflow is seamless as there is no interference and no micromanagement. Employee upskilling is serious business at Mentor Factory. I personally conduct so many workshops for my team members because at the, at the end of the day, uh, it's all about what we learn and of course about the employee empowerment. I run a program which goes by the name Power to You at the beginning of every financial year exclusively for my team members. It's good to hear that you are walking the talk because you give importance to the development of the people and you find time to personally train them and that is very important. For any leader, you have to know how to develop your team not you do not only see them as employees in your business but you see them as people that you can grow and develop to become a leader as well in the future you and are demonstrating that the personal development is, is very important in terms of managing people how many years have you been managing people and what are the challenges that you face as a leader in managing a team and how were you able to handle it? I am into people management for more than 20 years now. And the biggest challenge that I have experienced is resistance to change and lack of ownership and accountability. 
to overcome these challenges i practice feed forward exercise to understand how they see and also the reason behind their reluctance or hesitance to accept the change then i illustrate what's in it for them how will they benefit from the change what impact will the change have on their career and personal life to inculcate ownership and accountability i seek feedback from them periodically and allow room for mistakes because to err is human delegation is another aspect to inculcate accountability when it comes to delegation i believe in delegating authority not just the task help them also identify and close the gaps as and when required 20 years is a long experience in terms of managing people and it's so true that one of the biggest challenges that we will ever face as a leader is change management because even with ourselves when there's something that we need to change we will be stepping out of our comfort zone and try to reassess ourselves and if there is something that we need to change about us it it will take a lot of effort because for one we have been used to or accustomed to do things the way we it, it was so when we do that also to people when we try to implement change not everyone would readily accept and it's a big one of the biggest challenge of leadership and especially we are faced as hr professionals um, or practitioners we are often faced with this kind of situation where there is a new policy or a new procedure or a new plan or a new initiative that will be implemented across the organization and you are to implement it and then when you cascade it to the people that's the time where the acceptance to the change is kind of difficult so as hr practitioners we are supposed to be armed with the knowledge on how to implement such changes how will we be able to uh, lead people to implement those initiatives and i like uh, the way you put it that you have to explain the benefit to the people if the people understand that later on when we implement a specific initiative a plan or a project or simply just changing the way we do things when they see the value or when they see that it will redound to their interest or benefit you it makes easier for them to accept the change and it's also true that part of managing a team is teaching them how to take ownership and this is really difficult because uh, taking ownership and taking accountability is difficult because a lot of people are afraid to accept that they are wrong or they're going to be held responsible when something goes wrong or when there is a gap between what you have told them to do and the result of what they have done so probably because of the fear of failure fear of rejection fear of being recognized that's why it sometimes this is a challenge for them to uh, comply but it's it's all part of the leadership journey that we will all try to continuously learn Thank you for your time, Naresh, and thank you for all the insights that you have given. Thank you, Charlotte. I hope uh, I was able to answer all the questions. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you all to register on the upcoming webinar. It's called the Middle East Webinar 2021. It's going to happen on August 7. Uh, watch out for more details. And we will be giving out certifications for those who will attend. It's a leadership seminar. You will learn a lot. A discussion on the theme leadership development, unlocking human potential to thrive in the future of work. So don't forget, don't miss the opportunity to register for that upcoming event. See you there.